straightforward. And um, I, I might keep these headphones on just to make sure that we're always running our audio okay. Okay. Okay, so Prentice, um, tell us what is your name and the relationship to this condition? Uh, my name is Prentice Ward, and I actually have PXE, and I also serve as a support office for PXE International, raising awareness uh, for the condition through outreach, fundraising activities, and connecting those with PXE and their families to resources. So, uh, does anyone else in your family have this, or how has it affected you and your family? Um, I am the only person in my family who has uh, PXE. Um, it's affected me and my family in different forms because I was diagnosed as a teenager, so at that time um, it affected me and it made my parents, of course, very scared um, of what my future would hold. Um, now as a single mother, um, it's affected me differently because I look at it in terms of, you know, if I will be around for my children as they get older or if I lose my sight, will I miss major events in their life like their graduations and marriages and children and those sorts of things. And how how is your your children? You know, how have they been? Have they been supportive of you? And how have they been about the whole thing? Um, my children have been very supportive. Um, I think because I put on a good face, they don't often really understand the severity of the disorder or some of the complications that can come from it. But um, they are supportive, and they've actually helped with some fundraising activities when they can, and so are telling other people about it. So how much do they really, how much do they understand of what you, your condition is? Um, I think the biggest part that they understand is that uh, mommy has a disorder and there's no cure for it. And so I think that makes them afraid, um, but they don't necessarily understand um, some of the other complications that could really come from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you said you had mentioned that you were diagnosed as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Um, when I was 19, I was actually diagnosed, but I finally went to a dermatologist because around 15, I had a rash on my neck um, that I was told was from an allergic reaction. And after you know, four or five years of you know, being prescribed different medications, the rash wasn't going away and it actually got larger. Um, so when I was in college, I finally went to a dermatologist and that's where they biopsied me and made the um, diagnosis of PXE. So Obviously, for a teenager, any kind of any kind of uh, illness or disorder is going to be traumatic. You know, uh, what what were some of the challenges you faced back then, and what are some of the challenges you face now? Um, back then. Um, so there's some of the challenges. Okay, uh, some of the challenges I faced uh, then when I was diagnosed was primarily cosmetic for me at that time. You know, being young, but once they actually. Uh, explained what that diagnosis was. Um, they gave me a very dim uh, uh, outlook of what my life would be. They told me that I probably would not live past uh, 30, um, that I shouldn't have children, that a lot of my activities um, and my diet would need to be restricted in order to live as long as I could possibly um, live. And so that was very you know, scary being young and, and being told that. Um, now, being older, I have had other complications, like I've had vision loss. Um, fortunately, through research and through organizations like PXC who fund um, th those research projects, um, I have, uh, there are treatments that um, can be given um, for that, and I've received what's called Aviston shots, which uh, primarily got most of my vision back, whereas 10 years ago, those treatments weren't available and I would be legally blind. So um, very uh, happy for organizations like PXC and those researchers that, that look for, for treatments to help manage the disease. So the, this treatment was as a direct result of PXC research? Um, I don't know, I think I know the complete answer to that. <laughs> okay. Um, it uh, wasn't on the sheet. Yeah, <laughs> but it could have been a good answer, right? Uh, yeah, and I don't know the, the complete answer to that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you mentioned how it's changed over time. But has, has anything else changed over time with respect to the, the, the uh, diagnosis or the, or the condition? Um, the rash has uh, spread to other parts of my body um, as opposed to when I was originally diagnosed. So um, the original area is larger. It affects other areas of the body. Um, I've also had, um, like I said, vision changes. I have some cardiovascular um, issues also uh, because of the disorder. So, 
I guess a good question is, you know, obviously research is very important to this issue. And um, a question that comes up is, how has the lack of adequate funding or research impacted you and others? Uh, the lack of adequate uh, research and funding um, has impacted uh, myself and I think others with PXE because we have to live our lives with a sense of uncertainty because there's no cure for the disease. And also, um, I think it, it limits some of the um, treatments that could be found to help manage the disease more appropriately so that we have um, an improved quality of life. Mm -hmm. Good answer. So, why is attention to this condition so important right now? Um, attention to PXE is very important because it's a rare disease. And I think generally uh, funding and research is directed more towards uh, disorders that are more prevalent in our society because more people are aware of them and their complications. And so that's where the funding and research goes to. So I think as uh, we make more people aware of PXE and other rare disorders, it brings more attention um, to those disorders and we can advocate for better treatments and hopefully a cure. Good. So um, obviously I, I would think that the more people that participate in this, the better the research is going to be. Do you, do you see that um, helping research, this would help research be more effective if more people participate? Okay. Can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. 